So welcome to the Daily Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. We run this session here every Friday to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about data vaults, any data-driven uh, technologies, the data mesh if you want, um, um, cloud computing, all MPP computing, all that stuff is uh, interesting for us. Um, also data mining. So I have some uh, data mining skills before my uh, previous job, more or less. Um, all right. Um, yeah, and if you, you can essentially use the chat here in the client, if you want to raise a live question, you can use the Q and A function in the client or just raise your hand. I would give you voice. And then uh, you can also use a form, which I show you after today's session where you can essentially log in and, um, type in your question and upload some pictures you want, whiteboards or whatever. Um, if you receive multiple questions, we would cherry pick, well, I would cherry pick uh, the questions according to some team or larger topic, whatever. And um, yeah, it should be time box, so roughly 10 minutes for a good uh, video, essentially, for streaming. All right. If there will be no questions at all, I will talk about the cluster. We still have a couple of questions. So if you have uh, any questions, uh, keep going with your with asking those questions, because otherwise we talk about the cluster here soon. All right, cool. Um, let me just share the question of today. So this is about CDC. And uh, just a reminder, um, we have we had a couple of questions already for CDC, essentially, for CDC processing. So uh, check out the YouTube channel of Scalefree. And it's, uh, it's at Scalefree.com. And um, that's where you find essentially a couple of recordings already, or sh there should be some recordings, um, where we discuss CDC processing to a bit. Well, I pick it up again. Um, there's another CDC question on the pool, um, essentially, maybe coming up next week. We'll, we'll see. And um, but they, they might be similar already in shape to some extent um, in the answer. So this question is about essentially um, CDC processing into the raw data vault. I believe we had a similar question already like this. Um, the So you get records via CDC essentially, and you have a column with the type of operation, create, delete, update, and multiple timestamp columns, like uh, CDC timestamp change, uh, what's, what it was called, change state or change timestamp, something like that. It's all into the, in the staging area, okay? Um, so first of all, I, I assume you get the whole batch, the whole CDC package is arriving in the staging area. That's fine. You don't, there's no need to only capture the latest record from the CDC batch. We can process the whole batch essentially into the raw data vault, right? The whole CDC batch. Um, the record is going to be loaded into, in append only, into the only, yeah, I don't discuss anything else now. So it's an only uh, in, into the raw data vault. Are there any attention points between CDC and raw data vault to pay attention compared to a traditional loading of files in a staging area? Yes. Uh, there's two things I would I would do. First of all, we use a standard satellite to capture the CDC package. My goal would be to capture all the changes from the CDC package in staging now into the raw data vault. So I don't want to filter for the latest row because the problem is that um, when you ask users which record to be used for reporting, they will tell you the latest one. But what does it mean? Is it the latest, latest one from the CDC package? Or is it the latest one when they close the office at 6 p.m.? But in which time zone? Right. So latest here is very relative what latest really means. And that might change depending on which user you ask. So I want to capture all the changes from the source system, from all the CDC changes. So I can produce any latest um, uh, variation the user wants, uh, goes for essentially. That's number one. So I capture all the records, all the intraday changes from the CDC package. Um, to achieve that, the standard satellite has a problem because you can only have one delta per hash key and per load date. And if, if you have multiple changes describing the same customer, they arrive in the same mini batch from CDC and they have the same load date and the same hash key because it's still describing the same uh, customer. So what we do is we discuss this in a training in the multi-active um, satellite section typically. We don't use a multi-active satellite for that, just to be clear. But we, we, it's a good starting point, essentially. We use the subsequence from the CDC package, which you typically have either available or you can derive it from the uh, from the order of the records based on timestamp, on CDC timestamp. You can derive the order of the records in the CDC package and the, the, the sort order value, the order number, you add as microseconds to the load data stamp. So the, the initial load data stamp is indicates when you receive the CDC package. So you have one load date for the whole CDC package. You use this load date, but add a microsecond per row. So the first row in the CDC package, you add one microsecond, the second row, you add two microseconds and so on. You just add that. Because then what happens is all these intraday changes arrive in the right order in the satellite. 
the load data itself is not being used downstream. You shouldn't use it for reporting, for example, right? So we just use it to order the records in the right order, how they have been produced in a source application and emitted to the transaction log and to the CDC application. So it's in the right order, essentially, also in the satellite. And we can capture multiple rows because now we have a unique primary key per change from the, uh, from the CDC package, a unique load date, essentially, uh, that's but it's still in the right order and it reflects the technical timeline essentially how the data arrives. So that's number one. So that's how we capture the CDC changes. Um, the the second thing is the delta check in the satellite. So I will turn it off. Th that's the most simple case. So just get rid of the load uh, of the delta check. Here's the argument. First of all, it's complicated to run a delta check in CDC packages. So it's it's there's some effort behind it, and um, and it's also a performance issue, right? And um, the the delta check in a in a satellite in a in a batch driven satellite, what's the purpose? There's two purposes of the delta check. One is to reduce the amount of storage storage we need, right? So we can reduce the number of records we're storing in the satellite table. And with that comes higher performance because we can essentially, when we produce information, we can we don't have to load as much data from the disk into memory again, right? So less storage on disk means also less. Uh, data to be retrieved from disk into memory to deliver to the client. What, ha what happens next is in file or in, in batch processing, um, when we do data checks, we reintroduce gaps in a technical timeline. So we, re we remove all deltas where there's no change. Well, all, the, all the records where there's no change will not become a delta. That introduces gaps in the timeline. And these gaps are then closed later by the PRT table. So the PRT table will pick up the most recent delta for every business key or link record in a parent and for a given snapshot date timestamp. So what's the most recent delta this morning at eight o'clock, for example? And by doing so, it fills the gaps again. Uh, well, it does two things. The PT table aligns the deltas according to the, to the snapshot date and aligns all the deltas from the different satellites where data arrives at their own time uh, frames to this timeline, essentially, to the snapshot timestamp. And by doing that, it closes the gaps. And we can report exactly on the load data time essentially. Um, well, it activates the most recent delta in, by doing so essentially. When we turn off the delta check, what happens is, yes, there will be a bit more storage consumption. We talk about that one. There will be a bit more, bit more storage consumption and a bit more performance impact, negative performance impact, because we have to retrieve more deltas from disk. But then the PIT table still closes the gaps. I mean, first of all, we're reporting on a gap in between deliveries, right? So eight o'clock is not when you receive your data. You typically, when you report at eight o'clock, you receive the data of this morning at 2 a.m. and the next data will come in around 2 a.m. again in the night. So you're typically reporting on a gap. And now the PRT table will close uh, this gap essentially when you want to report with the most recent delta. And that's either a delta with an, act with an actual change or a non-delta, right? Where, where there was no change capture, uh, where there was a delta capture in the satellite, but there was no actual change on the satellite data. We just turned off the dollar check. But the end user will not see this. The end user doesn't care because what, what, the, what the end result is, you get a dimension view where you have descriptive data. That's what the users see. They don't necessarily see the load dates. On, and even if they see a load date in a dimension, which we typically add, who cares? They wouldn't, wouldn't care. So they don't care if you activate a non-delta or a delta from the satellite during information delivery. Impact is zero to the end user. So that's why it works. And um, the problem with the storage consumption now and the performance impact. Well, CDC, unlike, think about, think about this, the Dell check has the highest impact when you have full loads in, a, in, a, in, a, in the staging area or in a data lake. When you have full loads, you want to prevent loading these full loads into the satellite. But what if the staging area is data driven? What if there's one record per change in the source? Well, that you're, you, you're closer to what you want to achieve. What you want to achieve is when you split a satellite, a change in a source, let's say on one column, doesn't necessarily affect every satellite that you um, that you derive from the source table when you do a satellite split, right? I would assume one column change in the source only affects one of the satellites. Maybe the effective satellite on top, but at least for the description of data, only one of the satellites if there's no redundancy, right? So I would assume only one satellite out of your five or six satellites is affected. Which means that the delta check and data vault is more efficient because it's target driven than the source driven um, um, delta check in CDC. 
because the CDC check is not doing a split. You have one large row where one column has been changed and all the rest is the same. The data vault data check removes this, this redundant data, non-changed data by splitting the satellite, maybe for rate of change, for example, and then only activating one or loading one delta into one of these satellites. So it's more efficient, actually. But on the other hand, what's the, I mean, yeah, it's more efficient, but you don't deal with full loads, the other extreme, right? So yes, it's less less efficient than the having these um, having the data check driven by the CDC application is less efficient than the data vault check. But is it really worth going the, accepting the pain of implementing a complicated data check now for CDC data, or you know what, just turn it off? Yes, there will be a bit more storage, but certainly not as bad as full loads that you process. You have a bit of more storage consumption by your satellites. Um, a bit less performance when you retrieve the deltas, but the end user will not see it. And that's why we just turn off the delta checks in CDC. That's the most easy solution. And super efficient, super fast. Yeah, well, not super efficient, a bit more storage, a bit less performance, but this, you, even performance-wise, they will not recognize it. And then the pit table will activate the deltas uh, to be used in uh, for reporting purposes, essentially. And it doesn't matter which one they activate, a actual delta with actual changes in the satellite, or a non-delta where there's a record in the satellite, but no changes from delta to delta, essentially. It doesn't matter for the for the end user. There's a question here. Let me just show it to you. Does the same apply when we have also a B flag where the data for the key in before state is available? Ah, yeah, right. So I think that's, that's a, another question coming up next week, most probably. So when you have essentially um, a, a CDC package where you see the current data or the updated data, and the um, the uh, the same data before. What I would do most probably is to capture the data as is. So just capture as it is into the um, into staging area with those two sets of columns before and current um, side by side. So be it. It's just a script of data for you. And even in the raw data world, I would just process the way it is. Um, you can assume there is there was a change in the source. That's why you have a CDC record. So just dump it into the into the raw data world. And then deal with the, um, what could happen? What could happen is, I would assume you get a new record when there's a new, you get a delta or CDC record when there's a new record in the source, an updated record in the source, or a deleted record in the source. That's number one. So you can, you can distinguish those. And then um, the worst thing that can happen is that the before records or before columns don't match the current columns in your satellite of the previous delta, essentially. Well, that's that's inconsistency coming from the CC, essentially. And you have to deal with this in, in business logic anyway. So I would just dump the data into the into the target satellite. Yep. So I sent to it. Uh, but I I have to admit, uh, let me uh, go to your question again um, for next week, essentially. Then uh, I come back to you, this one here. Oh, you better, let me, copy, let me, I copy this. Okay. Okay, so that's what we do. So use the standard satellite at the microsec or at the, order of the records in the CDC package as microseconds to the as a lo smallest granularity to your timestamp, depending on what kind of timestamp data you have. And then um, turn off the data check. That's what we do. And that's 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 essentially how we process the data into the raw data vault. And then the PRT table will resolve the rest. That's the idea. Cool. Okay. So I hope it's worth it. I hope it was worth it. If you have a question like this, um, and there, there are more CDC questions coming up at the moment, uh, which, which is great because I love CDC. If I have a chance for CDC processing, I always go for CDC. Not because, um, I, I mean, it's, the, the processing is relatively, sim relatively similar to batch processing. We just have some little changes. But then the cool thing about CDC is there's two things. One is that you get the intra day changes in near real time, right? So it's nice. So um, I can produce more reports. Um, because uh, because of the, the different definitions of what latest here means. So I can serve more information users. And the other thing is I get notified typically about deletes. So it's like an audit trail in near real time, which is also great. So that's why I prefer, and we prefer here at Scafi, we prefer CDC processing if the data source can produce this. That's the idea. All right. Um, yeah, if you have a question like this or anything non-related to CDC is also good. Use this form here at sfr.ee slash dbfriday. That's where you can submit your questions, um, upload some team pictures if you want, or some whiteboard pictures typically, or model. We get more and more model pictures or um, some scenarios uh, drawn up in Lucy chart or VZ or whatever. All good, all cool. Um, there's also two more webinars, one on DBT and one on uh, Westscape at the moment. Um, th th those are once a month. We run the session here based on the name once a week, every Friday. 
Um, yeah, but it's also great. So uh, check them out as well. Log in and and see what's uh, what's going on there. They are the tool experts, which I'm not. I'm the data vault conceptual guy here. Okay. Um, all right. And then also check out the data vault innovators community that we set up with Ignition in Australia, where um, essentially you can also ask questions, where we have live chats um, between uh, me and Nodes, for example, and Julian. So log in, ask your questions. There's a lot of content. We're moving more and more content to the community. Um, so yeah, if you have, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's free. So come on guys. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining today. Um, yeah. Enjoy your weekend. It gets, it's getting colder here in Germany. So I'm living in Northern Germany. I need my jacket again. And, um, but yeah, enjoy your weekend. See you hopefully next Friday. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on, on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.